Today I'm going to share with you five different ways to set the conditions for a trigger to complete a task. So here are five different little scenarios. So this first scenario, we have three civilians and each civilian might have a variable name. This one doesn't, this one doesn't, but this one has a variable name of OF, short for officer. Each civilian has a waypoint that will take them into this trigger. This is an area trigger. These triggers here are just radio triggers. So I'll just radio alpha. Nothing special about them. That's just to get them to move. That's it. Then we have a task. And this task is to detect the true officer. And then you have a little search icon. This is set to succeeded and it's synced to the area trigger. So let's open up the trigger. The activation for this is civilian present and the condition is OF in this list. So remember OF is going to be this civilian. So let's test this out. We're going to tell the first civilian to go and will he trigger the trigger? Who is the true officer? It's not him. Let's try the next guy. Clear. Tell go to. Clear. Let's see Area if this. Clear. Let's see if this guy Area is Area the true officer. Nope, clear. he is not the true officer. Clear. Area let's clear. try this guy. Area clear. Is he the true officer? Detect the true officer. So as you can see, the true officer is the third guy. The second scenario is same thing, three officers. They all have waypoints that will take them to the middle of the trigger. And then we have radio triggers to tell them to go. For each of these civilians, these would-be officers, each civilian has a variable name of OF1. OF2 and OF3. Now for this task, we'll take a look at the task. This one is to detect all the officers. Get a search icon. And of course this is succeeded. In trigger itself, same thing like the first scenario, civilian present. And in the condition box we have another version of in this list. So OF1, OF2, and OF3. If all of these guys are in this list, which means in this trigger, then it's going to fire off the trigger and complete the task. All right, so let's tell these guys to go. So number four, will he trigger the task, complete the task? Nope. Area clear. Let's tell number five to go. He didn't trip off the trigger. Let's try this last guy. Number six. Will he trigger the trigger? Detect all officers. So he tripped the trigger. That means all three of these guys have to be present in the trigger for that trigger to go off because that is the condition. For the third scenario, I have four scientists. We have each of them named. Their variable name is SCI2. That's short for scientist number two. Then we have number four, number three, and number one. And this objective is to go to the task, rescue the scientists, and then you need a little icon for help. Now with this trigger, this one is anybody present. And what this one is doing, it's another version of using this list. And what this one's gonna do is it's going to count how many scientists are in the trigger. Now, We've decided how many they're going to be, which by this number is four. Once they're all in this trigger, then the task will go off. Now, if I had this as three, then it would only require three to be in the trigger. So let's take a look 
at this and test this out. Each one of these guys is captured, so I have to basically rescue them. And he's going to join my group. I'll have command over him. Two, join group. Ready. Two, halt. Contact, rifleman. Contact, soldier. Area clear. Two, Area clear. at ease. Area clear. Three, join group. Clear, clear. Three, area, stop. Area clear. Ready. Solid copy. Three, area relax. Area clear. Area clear. Clear. Four, join group. Ready. Four, at ease. Clear. Halt. Roger. Five, join group. Ready. Five, at ease. Stop. Wilco. Contact, infantry. Contact, infantry. All right, so now our objective is to rescue the scientists. So far, we have them under our command. And what we're going to do here is tell them to go into the trigger. Two, move back. On the way. So the, the task didn't go off yet. Three, move back. On the way. Standing by. Four, move back. Solid copy. Ready. So, so far the test has not gone off. We haven't rescued them. Five, move back. On the way. Ready. There we go. So now the task is complete because all four of them were in the trigger. If we do a little experiment and we change this to three, let's see what will happen. Let's tell five to go into the trigger. Five, move back. Copy, standing by. Let's tell four. Contact, soldiers. Contact, food mobiles. Four, move back. Contact, soldiers. Ready. Let's tell three. Three, move Clear. back. On the way. Ready. There you go. It only requires three. Two, move back. Copy that. Waiting. So in this scenario, all we have here is a task, and we have six O4 soldiers standing within the trigger. These guys aren't going to move. They don't have any weapons. They can't do nothing. So let's take a look at the task. The task for them is to kill all but three of them. And in the trigger itself, we have count, this list, select, alive, three. It's similar to the one where we rescued the scientists. So this one is a count of three. And then we have O4, not present. All right, let's test it out. All right, so all but three. Under fire! So three completed the task. Now, if we edit this again, and let's say we set this to five. Fire. That means five soldiers are still alive. So it's checking to see who is alive. And if you did one, One remains is checking to have one remaining. In this scenario, we have a setup where we have to rescue three scientists. We have to kill an officer and destroy two ammo boxes and then exit the area 
and end the mission complete. The three scientists that we have to rescue, each scientist has a variable name of SCI-5, short for scientist number five. This one is number six, and this one is number seven. The officer has a variable name of CAP, for captain, short for captain. Then we have ammo one for the first ammo box, and then ammo two for the second ammo box. Now in this trigger here, this is an area trigger, and this is any player present. When the player enters this trigger, basically it will end the mission complete. That's all it's going to do. It's tied to the succeeded part of the set task state for this task. And this task is to exfiltrate to the base. Mission objectives completed. Exit. So in order to get this task to exfil and end the mission complete, we have to have a condition that says that this task is you know completed it's ready we can exfil so let's take a look at this trigger so we have no condition or, or anything here we have a condition and here's a code what this one is doing is this is checking to see if the scientists the officer and the two ammo boxes are alive so for this one you have two arrays you have this array this one is the officer ammo 1, ammo 2, and in this array is the three scientists. So you have scientists number 5, number 6, and number 7. If you take a look at each one of these, you have one separate code here. So this code is checking to see if these guys are alive. This is set to 0. That means if it's zero, that means they're not alive. If I set this to three, they are alive. It's kind of like an on-off switch. We have the scientists, and we have this set to three. So these guys are going to be alive. These guys are not going to be alive. The zero. So let's try this out and see how this plays. So we're going to need the assault rifle. And we're not going to kill the scientists, obviously, because we're going to rescue them. We kill the officer. We destroy ammo box number one. And we destroy ammo box number two. So we know that we rescued the scientists because the condition checked to see if they were alive, which they are alive. The officer is dead, the two ammo boxes are destroyed, and the task went off. I have a task now to exfiltrate the base, and essentially that means go into that trigger. So if I go into this trigger, mission completed. I'm going to zip up this mission, this scenario, and put it into a zip file and link it for download and then you guys can check it out and use whatever setup that you want. Copy one of the codes or use some of the codes in your own scenarios to give you some ideas on what you could do in your own scenarios. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Let me just give you one example. Let's put down fire team. And actually, let's get rid of these guys because what's going to happen is this fire team's going to shoot at them, so we don't want that. And we'll get rid of him. So, what we're going to do with this, real quick, I'm just going to show you something that you can do. So, these guys are going to face this way, and I'm going to give them some waypoints. And 
are going to form a line from here. They're going to be in a file, and their behavior is going to be safe. And I'm going to sync their waypoint, set waypoint activation, and we're going to sync it to this trigger. So remember, when all three of these guys enter this trigger, and lead this guy, it's going to set this trigger off, and these guys are going to follow their waypoint. So let's move our guy right here. We'll save that. Form file. Relax. All right, so there they are. And tell these guys to move. Is this the true officer? No, it's not. How about this guy? No, it's not. And how about this guy? Is he the true officer that we're searching for? He is. So now, these guys are moving and following their waypoints. Move up. So that's something you could do. You can create reinforcements. You can create other actions based on the conditions. Form line. Move up. So I hope you guys find this useful. I will link this mission in the description of the video. You guys can download it and use it in your own scenarios. Use aspects of it, what, what have you, learn from it. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I will catch you guys on the next video.